Feeling fresh up and about in the morning, this is something that some people come up and say, yeah, well, this is not my cup of tea. It's not about my brain. It's not me. So the sense of morningness uh, as, as, as opposed to evening, eveningness is something that people are uh, you know, sharing this with their counselors, psychologists, or their sleep physician. They are saying that, you know, literally we're, morning, we're not morning people. And, uh, uh, you know, actually for me and uh, many of my colleagues who've been working in the field of sleep medicine for years, uh, we see people coming to our doors and they are complaining about uh, some issues like lack of competence or capacity of work during all hours. So they don't feel this vigilance and, and cognitive capacity in, in daytime. And they would have this excessive sleepiness during the working hours. And sometimes they, f they feel fatigued and they, they just come up with this body pain and, you know, like, like lack of concentration, decreased cognitive function and capacity in the, in the early morning hours specifically. So they come with this four different types of complaints. They would say that I find it difficult to fall asleep. Also, some others might come out with like, I find it difficult to stay asleep. Some come up like, I find it difficult to wake up. And the others would say, I find it really difficult to stay awake during the day. So it all started with the, with the publication that we came across uh, back in like 2004. And the title of the publication was published in Nature saying that sleep is of the brain, for the brain, and by the brain. But it's better off saying that sleep is of the body as well by the body and for the body. So not only those cells in the brain and the, and the nerves and the, and the, I mean, the neural cells and neurons in our, in our central nervous system, they do have this uh, you know, internal uh, programming for, for the genetic modulation, the genetic modification of, the, of the, the, the production of subproteins that they are regulating or wake and uh, sleep circadian rhythm but also we have in every single cells throughout our body, this is specific, uh, you know, circadian rhythm programming. So we got genes in our heart, in our, in our, in our lungs, in our kidney, in our liver, in our muscular system. So whatever we, we, can, uh, we can consider in our, in our bodily systems, we do have this circadian rhythmicity, which is constitutionalized in each and every of the cells and bodily organs and systems. So as, we, as we're talking now, let's imagine wh wh what is our body clock doing right now? And are we kind of morning type people? Some people are coming just saying, I'm, a, I'm not a morning person, I'm an evening person. But the question is that, are you really constitutionally like a more evening person? Is that well defined in your genes? Are you literally not able to change that for a different kind of chronotype. So what time would we get up if we are entirely free to do so? And also when, when we are at, uh, at our most alert status during the, uh, like within the 24 hours, when we're performing our level best? That's another question to ask. And at a time of the day, when do we feel that we become tired as a result of a need for sleep? And when is the best timing frame for our exercise? And how the bodily clock is going just to, you know, put our best performance level in a way that if we are following our body clock, uh, how and what time would choose the best fit for our physical performance? Well, the question is, are we literally an owl or a, a lark? So what we do in the sleep laboratories and what we, what we study for the sleep, uh, your biological backgrounds in each and specific uh, case scenarios and people coming to our clinics where we see them and are, some of them may complain about you know, having this discordance between the social time and their biological time. They gotta be going to work, but their body does not send the signal of, well, stay vigilant. It's very difficult for, for them to stay awake. So they would like, yeah, like normally say that we're not morning larks, we're night owls. So if we're going to plan to do something specifically important, let's plan for the evening timing frame. 
So it's about the circadian clock, and it's about the amplification of the circadian clock genes and also genetic association between those things and our sleep phenotype. So we have the chronotype. Some of us are uh, genetically morning or genetically evening type. But the fact of the matter is that only less than 5% of the people are genetically defined to be morning or evening type. You know, the issue is, is, is that we are turning our body clock, we're turning our circadian rhythm to be even more evening type. So some of us would love to stay awake well into the night. We are having this tranquility, this darkness, this loneliness. Uh, you know, we don't have any, uh, you know, environmental distractors. So we are on our own and it's, it's lovely for some of us to stay awake. Um, you know, well into hours into the night. But by time, we're going to sort of modify, we're going to manipulate our, our genetic profile. And as we move, month after month, year after year, we're going to turn ourselves like an evening person. But we are not genetically an evening person. And it becomes even harder to change back, I mean, just back to get back on track, back on track to be a morning person. We got to be, in, we got to be a morning person most of the time because we need to go to work. And when the sun shines, people go to work. So we need to just stay aligned with the social timing, right? And uh, th this is all being regulated by our internal oscillator, if you like. And it's like a 24-hour period or circadian, uh, like, like uh, a cycle of uh, uh, the, the expression and modification of the genes and also production of the proteins in each and every cells within our central nervous system. And uh, these are being synchronized as well by time with the social environmental cues. But we have the environmental cues that are called zeit gibbers. So what are zeit gibbers? The zeit gibber is the sunshine, is the, the sound of the bird. So when we wake up in the morning, when we smell the coffee from the coffee machine, this is a zeit gibber. When we, when, we, when we just hear the sound of the alarm clock, this is a zeit gibber. Sometimes we, we should just, you know, set the clock for a specific timing in the morning. And even though uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, the alarm goes off, but it is also sometimes hard to get out of the bed. So uh, there are many rhythmic outputs. It's not only about sleep and wakefulness, but also our body temperature, our gene expression, and our neuronal activity. We have the circadian clock. We have the, uh, uh, you know, I mean, like, like a body clock. It's better to say that we also have the mind clock. So within some specific time frames during 24 hours, we are at our peak performance for cognitive functions like memory, attention, learning, executive functions, reasoning, planning, uh, language function, or sensory motor, uh, motor performance and aptitude. Okay, these all refer to the circadian clock output, that which, which is critically important. And also we have the hormonal release. So by specific time frames, uh, that we have this, uh, you know, uh, surge in, in some hormones that they are going to uh, let us stay awake and vigilant as much as possible. A question, another question is that, why, why is that so important? The first and foremost is that uh, it's important and it's a cool science. So back in 2017, it has become so elegant in terms of research and scientific findings that a shared Nobel Prize was, was awarded to three scientists in physiology uh, and or medicine for their in-depth study and knowledge and their insight that they just, you know, offered to the scientific community with regards to the genetic underpinning mechanisms for the regulation of sleep and wakefulness. But what are those genetic underpinning mechanisms? What are those substrates, uh, the transcription and translation of the feedback loops? Well, we have genes, we have couplet genes. So these two genes, which are called like clock and BMAL, they are actually like activators. Uh, they are heterotrimers when, when we have this transcription factors. They are, they are generating the proteins, which are, which are you know, uh, named as clock and BMAL. So the protein dimer is, uh, the clock BMAL dimer is promoting our sleep. And uh, on the contrary, w when we have the pair and cry as two other proteins, they are about uh, just, you know, initiating and maintaining our vigilance and, and diurnal performance. 
And more specifically, when we're referring to the pair genes, the pair three is a specific gene that, that, is, uh, that is just amplified during the day hours. But as, as, we're, as we're approaching the night hours, then the pair and cry will get degraded, as you can see in the figure. Uh, also, to just have this uh, specific modulator mechanisms that uh, just governs this uh, two different systems that come into play as a flip-flop, a sleep-wake uh, circadian rhythm, we, we need to have some modulators. We need to have kinases. For example, CK1 delta epsilon is one of the most popular kinases which come into play, comes into play. Also, we have the autonomous uh, cell factors that you're regulating this 24 hours feedback loop uh, drives with which, uh, uh, which uh, controls the output of the genes. And amongst all those uh, uh, bits and pieces, different kind of uh, you know, mediators and uh, variables, uh, for instance, we have another defining gene, which is called the tau gene. And the tau gene, uh, when, when it is a Y-type uh, expression of the tau gene in the animal models, when we have the hamster or rodent model in the laboratories, uh, when, when they have the Y-type uh, uh, you know, presentation of, of this uh, tau gene, then the animal would follow like a 24-hour pattern for the sleep-wake cycle. But when the, when the tau is mutant, then we have less than 24-hour rhythmicity because, only, uh, because of only one single gene mutation. And that's pretty amazing, right? So we, we got to learn about uh, uh, the genetic profile, the, uh, the, the risk or the possibility for the single nucleotide polymorphisms or any gene mutations for PER3, for clock or BMAL or CRY, and make sure if the person is genetically uh, a night type or a morning type person. But question is, are we victims of our genes? Can, can we literally uh, not change the genetic profile which has been already defined? As, as we highlighted before, this has not been carved on stone. This has not been our you know, genetic profile early on in the life. But we have done some modifications about our lifestyle changes, about our lifestyle habits. And by this, this is exactly what we refer to as, uh, like a, uh, a neuro in neuroscience, we call them epigenetic modifications. So we, we, we cause persistent and permanent, in some cases, permanent changes in our gene profile by, by the environmental stimulation, environmental changes. That's amazing. So, but people coming to us, they're saying, you know what, doctor, I, I find it very difficult to sleep at night, and I find it very difficult, even more difficult to wake up in the morning. That's a question, that's the statement we, we get a lot. And they ask us, what should we do? We're losing our job. We're not capable of performing our daily life activities. We're not able to come up with the requirements of meet the demand of our you know, vocational or family duties or whatever we, we, we need to come up with for our performance and personal productivity. What should we do? And we have this fatigue and you know, bodily soreness, pain, and uh, the drowsiness. Uh, we have even have excessive daytime somnolence, somnolence, and it happened that we were just having the experience for a near accident experience, uh, or we, we had a fall, or we were in the middle of the discussion, and then we dozed off. So this is the thing that we repeatedly uh, uh, get from those people coming to our setting and complaining about their sleep-wake uh, derangements and uh, you know uh, this regulation. Some of them are actually using lots of caffeine. They are taking stimulants and uh, they, they are not performing well at job, as I said, and they, they are just you know, procrastinating their assignments. They are not doing well in their social relationships. They have issues with their cognitive aptitudes and in terms of their behavioral control, they are off the chart. They are just having this dysregulated emotion. They have the anxiety symptoms. They become depressed by time, or they might be shouting, they might be yelling at people, or, or cussing at some instances. Uh, they, are, they are not doing fine. And for the motor and the sensory system, they also complain about some uh, you know, clumsiness and not, uh, not a good motor aptitude and, and, and motor sensory coordination. We as, as sleep researchers and sleep practitioners or sleep neuromedicine uh, physicians, if you like, we do, in some instances, we do the polysomnography. 
So we're just checking all the signals from different uh, system organs, at, at least 18 parameters uh, are being a vari var variables are being tested. And by that, we come up with questionable diagnosis or the impression that this person is not really uh, following a good, uh, you know, you know, sleep structure, macro, micro structure overnight, but during the day he is catching up more sleep. But that might be because of the chronotype, because of the endophenotype for evening this morningness. We give the tests. Uh, some of those questionnaires are, uh, for example, uh, questionnaires like, like uh, morningness, eveningness questionnaire. So MEQ. When, when this specific guy, for example, filled out that questionnaire, it turns out that is, he's absolutely an evening type person. And he says, you know, Doc, this is, this, is my, this is in my genes. This is in my DNA. You cannot do anything for it. We cannot do anything for it. And then we go for the testing, and it turns out, yeah, the, the analysis of the circadian clock gene per three was, uh, was uh, I mean, uh, com compatible with uh, the evening type. But we should have done something to change this malfunction. So we did the PCR, and it turns out that the P3 gene is mutated. And then we went for uh, some, some alterations uh, in, that, in that dysregulated sleep-wake cycle rhythmicity. So prescription of the light at a specific intensity or a LOX from a, from a distinct distance for a, for a defined period of time in the morning at a specific you know, light shade or, or uh, whatever variables that are applicable to that is something which has been uh, you know, studied widely in the research. And also we have melatonin, but melatonin should be, very, uh, should be you know, prescribed pretty much uh, with caution because that would, that would alter the sleep-wake cycle. And last but not least is to keep in mind that folks, we're not victim of our genes. We can modify, we can live a better life, we can get tested. If something is not right and we're not getting enough quality of sleep, we need to refer to the experts. We need to get examined and also if needed, we got to be doing the polysomnography test uh, and to make sure that things are right or not okay. And by that, there's always a solution. So I hope you catch up a very good quality of sleep, adequate and efficient and stay well. Uh, have an open eyes to the necessity of having a quality of sleep.